Zambia and Zimbabwe are often referred to as Siamese twins. Their attachment transcends cultural, political, and social economic boundaries dating back to pre independence era. Typical of a Siamese bond, Zambia and Zimbabwe continue to work together in improving the welfare of their citizens through their shared natural resources, such as the Victoria Falls, the Kariba Dam, and other social and economic infrastructure. Among other priorities, Zambia and Zimbabwe have placed high premium on adequate and sustainable provision of electricity, a key driver of growth in any economy. Currently, both domestic and industrial demand for electricity outstrips supply in Zambia and Zimbabwe and the Sadiq region as a whole. Reduced power generation as a result of climatic conditions dating back to 2009 has left the two sister republics with a crippling power deficit that has affected over 200 million people in the entire Southern African region. At the height of load shedding, energy experts put Zimbabwe's power deficit at about 800 megawatts, while Zambia's deficit is about 500 megawatts. Furthermore, there are large portions of communities in both countries that cannot access electricity. This exerts extreme pressure on the environment as people search for alternative sources of energy, such as firewood and charcoal. The result is deforestation, soil erosion and other adverse ecological and climatic conditions with devastating effect on people's social and economic well-being. In response to this energy crisis, the governments of Zambia and Zimbabwe have embarked on the development Batoka Gorge Hydroelectric Power Scheme, some 54 kilometers downstream the Victoria Falls, along the mighty Zambezi River in Southern Province, at a cost of four billion United States dollars. When completed, Batoka Gorge Power Project will generate a total of 2,400 megawatts of electricity to be shared equally between Zambia and Zimbabwe. In technical terms, the Batoka Hydroelectric Scheme will comprise a 181-meter-high dam and two underground power stations, one on the Zambian and another on the Zimbabwean side, with an installed generation capacity of 1,200 megawatts each. Zambezi River Authority is a binational organization co-owned by the governments of Zambia and Zimbabwe, established 30 years ago by parallel legislature in the parliaments of the two countries. The organization is responsible for the management of the Zambezi River and any infrastructural developments on the river such as the Kariba Dam, including the proposed Batoka Hydroelectric Scheme. The Zambezi River Authority is a binational organization by two governments, Zambia and Zimbabwe, and it was established 30 years ago as a corporate body on 1st October 1987 by parallel legislation in the parliament of Zambia and Zimbabwe, and specifically to be responsible for the management of the Zambezi River, which flows between the two common borders. The mandate was to obtain social economic benefits derived from uh, development in terms of uh, river infrastructure existing and to be, uh, to be constructed or to be developed. Launching the implementing process of the Batoka Gorge Power Electric Scheme in Lusaka on March 22, 2017, Energy Minister pointed out that the cost of undertaking such a massive hydropower project was colossal, which could not be financed by the state treasuries of the two sister republics. This is why the two countries have decided to turn to the private sector and other financiers to help fund the project through what is known as the Independent Power Producer Arrangement, IPPA. The project is expected to cost $4 billion, thereabout. 
It is with this background that the Council of Ministers, when they met in December in Vicfors, uh, uh, during the Council of Ministers of the Zambezi River Authority, made a commitment to raise the funds for the Batoka Boat Project through an investors' conference. The conference colleagues here work for 30th March in Livingston is expected to attract contractual development financial institutions, bilateral cooperative partners, local, regional, and multinational private sector organizations, developers, and etc. The aim of the investors' conference, like I said earlier on, is to market the financing requirements for the Batuga Boat Idol Power Project through the independent power producer arrangement. And let me just say one thing, colleagues. We are talking about $4 billion. I don't think Kora Komtati or his counterpart in Zimbabwe would be, re would be able to raise that amount of money through the treasury provision. It's impossible. So the only chance that we have is to go and mobilize financing from the private sector and our development partners. At this platform, the governments of Zambia and Zimbabwe will present the commercial structure adopted for the development of the Batoka project showcasing the investment opportunities for the benefit of the participants. On March 30th, 2017, Zambia's tourist capital Livingstone was hosting not tourists, but special guests for a special cause. The home of the Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the world, was hosting a high-level international conference aimed at mobilizing finances from cooperating partners local and international multilateral development financial institutions and multinational private entities to develop Zambia and Zimbabwe's largest ever energy infrastructure of modern time, the Batoka Gorge Hydroelectric Power Scheme. The two-day conference which drew participants from different parts of the world was being held under the theme Harnessing Sustainable Power Generation Potential of the Mighty Zambezi River. In the truest sense of their hospitality, Zambia and Zimbabwe held a cocktail on the eve of the conference in honor of their guests who traveled from far and near as potential investors in the Batoka Gorge Power Project. The two governments used the occasion to underscore the long-standing relations that exist between Zambia and Zimbabwe. To age ourselves, to intensify and enhance that political cooperation in the relationship. It's very important, especially when you are neighbors. I also want to appreciate the collaboration and cooperation that has existed between the two governments in getting to where we are. Uh, it has been a result of a lot of hard work, but the collaboration and the cooperation has been excellent. And I want to appreciate that in a very special way. Tomorrow's event marks a very important step, significant step, by the two governments, by the two countries, by the two peoples, to push ahead with the industrialization of our economies and to push ahead with economic growth in our respective economies. It was clear from the onset that the Batoka Hydroelectric Power Project, at the highest level of political will and support, as evidenced by the presence of Zambia's Vice President, who officially opened the conference. In her keynote address, the Vice President appealed to the investors to invest in the project, as their investment was safe and secure. I wish to inform this gathering that due to the critical role energy plays in social and economic development, our two countries have declared energy as a priority sector. I wish therefore to assure you of the utmost political will and commitment from the highest offices of both Zambia and Zimbabwe in the development of the project. We have in the two countries liberalized the market in the energy sector in order to allow private sector participation. Further, we have accommodative fiscal environments for such developments 
and transmission system policies that assure market across the African region. Zimbabwe's Minister of Energy explained the history and agency of the Batoka Gorge hydroelectric scheme in addressing the critical power deficit affecting not only the two neighboring countries but the Sadiq region at large. This project which we are discussing today was identified long back before even the Gariba Dam was built. Engineers scouting for a site to build a power plant along the Zambezi River identified among others the Batoka Gorge as the possible suitable site. <coughs> However, because of economic considerations at that time, the Gariba Hydroelectric Scheme was built first. In the late uh, in 80s, the demand for power in the two countries rose significantly, spurred by the boom in the mining sectors. At this stage, the two governments of the republics of Zimbabwe and Zambia agreed to revisit the Badoka Gorge hydroelectric scheme as a source of additional power supply. The Zimbabwean energy minister added that mechanisms were underway to ensure that excess power from Batoka benefits the rest of Africa to stimulate sustainable economic growth. Showcasing the vast and virgin investment opportunities the Batoka Power Project has to offer, Zambia's energy minister, for his part, assured the investors that Batoka was a profitable venture to invest as it offered the lowest production cost on the continent of Africa. The World Bank and the Corporation in International Waters for Africa engaged independent consultants to undertake pre-construction studies such as updating of the engineering feasibility studies and the environmental and social impact assessment studies. Further, the two governments have engaged Ernest and Young to provide legal and financial transaction advisory services on this project. Your Honor, I would like to inform that the updating of the engineering feasibility studies validates the engineering feasibility studies of 1992-93, which confirmed the technical feasibility of the project. Further, based on these studies, the project will be one of the least cost generation projects in the region because preliminary indications suggest that the Batoka Gold Hydroelectric Scheme will have a unit generation cost of 3.6 USC cents per kilowatt hour compared to the average regional tariff of 8.25 US per kilowatt hour. And that's what makes this project, colleagues, the most attractive project for you to think about investing in. Zambia's Minister of Finance underscored the importance of hydropower generation despite ongoing efforts to diversify to alternative sources of energy such as solar and thermal power. We need to have a long-term solution to addressing the power needs of Zambia. One, that long-term solution will involve diversifying the power sources, going into solar, going into other forms of generative power. But there's no substitute to hydropower generation. And this is where the Batoka fits in. Hydropower gives you the best that you require to drive industries such as mining companies. Batoka is especially significant because it answers one, not only to power deficits of Zambia, but also to the power requirements of the region. Two is the most significant regional project that will be carried out under the context of SADC. In the eyes of the Zimbabwe's finance minister, there is little development to talk about without sufficient power to drive the economy. The project will go a long way in transforming our two nations' economic fortunes. Your Honor, power remains an important drive of development. Without sufficient power, there is limited development to talk about. There are therefore significant benefits to our economies, namely 
opportunities for creation of new jobs, potential cost reductions, improved capacity utilization, access to electricity by our people, economic recovery and rising welfare standards among our people. Investment in power generation is one of the key priorities on the development agenda of the African Development Bank, ADB. The bank's vice president was one of the key stakeholders and speakers at the conference during which he announced a 12 billion United States dollar package which the bank has set aside for the development of power generation schemes in Africa over the next four years in order to increase universal access to energy through projects such as the Batoka. The board of directors have approved the strategy and commits the bank to invest $12 billion in the energy sector by 2020 from its own resources and leverage additional financing from all partners, the private sector and other DFIs, to the tune of $45 to $50 billion. Pursuing this strategy at the bank, total approvals last year reached $1.7 billion. These projects range from based operations to power generation and public sector transmission and distribution. This year, we're expecting to invest from our own resources $2 billion in the energy space in Africa because the issue of energy is crucial for Africa. Zambezi River Authority Management presented the general overview of the Batoka Gorge Hydroelectric Power Scheme in which it outlined the viability, sustainability and profitability of the project among other merits. So the current pro, uh, potential that has been read, that, that, that was uh, looked at and uh, seen to be available goes to the tune of almost 15 to 16 thousand megawatts and currently we we only have about five thousand which we have developed and once we put the batoka it will add to another two thousand to give us almost seven thousand but we still have another seven eight thousand to to go and once we have that, we will be able to move, we will be able now to move ships from the Indian Ocean right up to Livingstone. Along with the project consultants, Ernest and Young, Zambezi River Authority was also on hand to answer questions from investors on the visibility and operation of the hydroelectric scheme. Since this uh, feasibility study and the ESA is still uh, ongoing, so we, we, hope, we hope to know uh, when can we get uh, some uh, accurate uh, schedule for the following works like uh, uh, when the, the feasibility study and the ESA to be finished, and when the, the tender document to, to be finished, and, uh, and also when the tender will, uh, will, will, will start, just uh, uh, so that we can prepare uh, ourselves well. Immediately following this conference, we, the, the, the group, ZRA ministers and advisors, will be working on a program of engagement going forward. In parallel, we're working on, as been mentioned a number of times, um, finishing feasibility studies, finishing technical studies, and producing a preliminary information memorandum, which is targeted for um, middle 2017, middle of this year. We will be trying our, our best and, and working to being able to define a timetable at that time. So the first strict date is mid-2017, and with that, we'll be announcing a procurement program and a schedule. His Royal Highness, Chief Muguni of the Tokalea people of Kazungula district, in whose chiefdom the project will be located, is one of the key stakeholders in the success of the Batoka Gorge power project. 
he has nothing but praises for the two governments for embarking on the project. The traditional leader, an ardent proponent of development in his chiefdom, however, wants government to go beyond provision of social amenities that to come with this huge investment and instead implement empowerment schemes to benefit the local people. We needed it like yesterday. It's good to hear that uh, we are actually moving forward and uh, we may realize the, the, the actual uh, construction of the dam quite early, earlier than I thought we would. More so that we are having problems with the IMF. I, I had no hope that to take off with those problems. But now the route they are taking, I think, is encouraging. Looks like to take off with or without IMF. I'm glad even the minister did say that uh, we should come up with a package where at the end of the day uh, the Mkuni community will have become different. What we are saying is that uh, the Mkuni Development Trust, which is the vehicle for delivering the problem, should supply some of the things like stone, like cement, you know, so that they can cut out that development projects. And I think the government should move in that direction wherever there's a big project in the rural zone. If it's a mine, let the community in that area be given through their development trust some component, not handouts, not, not work. When you talk of employment, that's nothing. They must be empowered to make the real money so that they can sustain their own development. On the second and final day of the conference, Investors were taken on a tour of the project site of the Batoka Gorge Hydroelectric Scheme, a beautifully curved and spectacular Batoka Gorge, about 54 kilometers downstream from the Victoria Falls. The project manager for the Batoka Gorge Hydroelectric Scheme is optimistic that construction of the power station will be on schedule. The, 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 the tenure to, to build the, the to complete uh, the, the, the dam. The construction period, mostly the longest being the dam, will take us five years. The power stations take shorter time than that. The power stations? Yes. So we expect this five years? Five years. Yes. Five to six years. Procrastination is one of the biggest drawbacks to development. Zambia's Minister of Water, Development and Environment wants this avoided at all costs in the implementation of the Batoka Hydroelectric Scheme. Our problems that we are facing because our people are tired, you know, they don't understand the, 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 the intricates of uh, power generation. All they want is to be supplied. Why is power not coming to our homes? And that's a question. They don't care where you, where you generate this uh, uh, power. We, we need to tell them how much we are investing and uh, how much uh, it will help our communities, both uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia. As the conference came to a close, it was clear that the Batoka Hydroelectric Scheme had generated a lot of interest from investors and that construction of the project should be underway sooner than later. Certainly, here is a good project that makes good economic sense, a life-changing project in the energy sector that is bound to turn around the economies of Zambia and Zimbabwe and position the two countries as the energy hub in the Sadiq region and beyond, the Batoka Hydroelectric Scheme.